All right, you know what? We're just gonna do it live. Um, I do not have good uh, like monitoring on my actual laptop screen, like the entire screen's frozen. So I'm gonna be just like looking to the side. Audio might be a little weird, but we're just gonna rock and roll. We're like five minutes late, so let's do it, right? Thank you. I appreciate everyone's patience. All right, so my name is JP Zivilich. I'm the CTO founder of Pipekit. Um, I'm going to be joined remotely by Becky Polly. Uh, she is in Birmingham, England, and she's going to be dialing in live, even though it's uh, midnight 30. She's not dialing in live. We've gotten the stuff pre-recorded, but it's gonna be good. I uh, work at Pipekit. She is uh, at Jetstack Consult. And today we're going to be doing the sequel to a talk that one of my colleagues, Darko, and uh, Becky gave in Paris, which was a deep dive on Argo workflows. But instead, we'll be talking about Argo events. So let's get into it. What is Argo events? So within the Argo project suite of tools, there are four different tools. There's Argo workflows, Argo CD, Argo events, and Argo rollouts. Argo events is an event-based dependency manager for Kubernetes. Now, it is most tightly coupled with Argo workflows. Um, we'll see that a little bit later in the presentation as well. So now that we've um, gone over the dictionary definition of Argo events, what is an event, right? It's something we work with pretty regularly within software engineering, but what is the definition? So an event is an object that is describing an action that has been taken, and it consists of two parts. So principally, it is an action or the description of the action and then the context, so metadata surrounding the action itself. So it is sent from an event producer that is the source. So uh, in many cases, think like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, uh, S3, so on and so forth. And it is sent uh, out and to be consumed by event consumers, which could be really anything. And we'll cover a bit of that later. So one thing that is uh, interesting is that events are unopinionated, right? So we have an example event on the side. It's got the context and then the action information. You don't see anything about what things should happen as a result of the event being fired, right? So the event is just describing the action that is being taken, not the routing that should happen as a result of the event firing. So, right, if you open a pull request on GitHub, that will fire an event, but it's not going to say what's gonna happen. That's up to us within Argo events to define. So again, what is Argo events? It is an event-driven workflow automation framework. Um, we mentioned that it is most tightly coupled with Argo workflows. So you're seeing a bit of the UI, and this UI, even though it is specific to Argo events, lives within Argo workflows. All right, so what can we do with Argo events? Really. I don't know, three things. Things come in threes, it sounds good. Um, primarily, you'll see the CI CD use case happening. So that's one we'll talk about within um, this presentation. So how do I open a pull request within GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, so on and so forth, and run tests, do my builds, uh, do a, whatever have you. Second is event-based data processing. This one is also picking up steam in terms of popularity. So. Um, let's say I have an S3 bucket and I'm receiving data into it, either new data or uploading or updating data. And then we want to run an Argo workflow that is going to process that data. And then let's say, um, like send a Slack notification at the end. These are things that we can all do within Argo events. Lastly, I mean, really it's, uh, sky's the limit, maybe not even the sky, you know, you could automate, um, I don't know, launching a rocket using Argo events, uh, based on, uh, when your favorite TV show comes out. I don't know. Anything where there is like a, a webhook or an event payload being fired and then something that can be done with Kubernetes can be accomplished using Argo events. All right. So within Argo events, there are four components. There is the event source, there is the event bus, the sensor, and the controller manager. So some of the terminology does get a little confusing and I'll spend a little bit of time going over it. The event source does not describe the actual external event provider, right? So we're not talking about, let's say, GitHub here. We're within Argo events describing the configuration to consume from that external provider, right? Like it's a, 
subtle distinction, but it's important. So you'll be uh, defining a YAML file because Kubernetes, uh, that information of how to authenticate to receive payloads from GitHub. Second is the event bus. This is probably the most simple sounding component, but if you're trying to build for scale, it is um, something you will have to revisit later. We'll just cover the most basic use case, but what it does is it takes the event payload that the um, event source receives and translates and uh, then hands it off to the sensor. I included a, a little magic school bus shout out. I figured we're all nerds. We probably grew up in that time frame. A lot of us watched it. I got a kid coming in March, my firstborn, and I'm so excited to like rewatch all the episodes with him. Like, just like nerd parenting, let's go. Um, anyway, so the sensor, uh, this is actually going to be a workhorse in terms of the user specifying um, configuration. This is going to be where we map the event that we receive from the external source to the object that we want to create. So let's say, again, we're mapping uh, the event source of like GitHub to the Argo workflow that we want to use to run the tests. And then lastly, we have the controller manager. This is going to be running uh, like a loop, um, monitoring the uh, like state and connecting all of the bits together. All right. This is where, uh, ideally, I hand it off to Becky, but we're going to try and see if uh, we can get this audio working. If not, I'm going to freestyle this, and I'm going to uh, call Becky tomorrow when it is appropriate in her time and apologize. She also has like a lovely sounding voice, much better than mine, so I feel like I need to apologize to y'all as well if uh, we can't get Becky on the horn. Is that centered over the play button? Thanks, gang. All right, that is real quiet. Can Absolutely. anyone hear that? Requires a few different steps. So nope. Let's go to each of them. It's coming from something, but we can't hear it. All right. Building up a model. Is there any more boost we can give it on, on the gain or anything? Nothing? OK. Oof, I will try that one. All right, can you, uh, can you mute the line real quick? I'm going to disconnect the, the, the audio in. Thank you. Don't want to give you all a boom. Sound guys unite. All right. Speaker, crank it. Is that the right thing? I don't have an. Let's have a look at these components in action by installing Argo events in our cluster. As we run through these components, we will intentionally add a bit of repetition, and that's to help reinforce the concepts we notice people find trickiest when first getting started. Our installation requires a few different steps, so let's go through each of them, building up a model or diagram as we go. The first thing we install is, unsurprisingly, Argo events itself. You can see a simplified example here, but we recommend for real life checking out the Argo Helm chart. When we install Argo events, we create a number of resources, most of which we can skip over. But at the point of installation, what we care about is that we've added four important resources, four components to our cluster. And these include three custom resource definitions and one deployment. A quick recap. Custom resource definitions are what allow us to extend the Kubernetes API to create custom resource types. For example, I can create a custom resource definition for an event source, and this allows me to create and interact with my new event source custom resource, just like I would a pod or a deployment. In our cluster, the three custom resource definitions include the event bus, which we already know acts as the transport layer, and this is what we can think of as connecting our other two resource types, event sources and sensors. These custom resource definitions give us the ability to create resources of these types. But when we first install Argo events, we don't actually create any event sources, event buses or sensors in our cluster. Instead, that's where controller manager comes in. 
Control the manager's job is to watch for creation or changes to these CRDs in our cluster and to take action when a change is observed. In other words, control the manager creates and manages event sources, event buses and sensors. Under the hood, controller manager actually includes three controllers, one watching each custom resource type. And it's worth knowing this because these controllers were originally separate and were later combined into one. So you will sometimes see them represented separately in diagrams, but nowadays they all live inside controller manager. So we've installed Argo events and created three custom resource definitions and a controller manager deployment in our cluster. Let's put controller manager to work. And we can do this by installing our next component, the event bus. And you might ask, well, why wasn't the event bus installed as part of the previous step? The simple answer is because we have a choice of which event bus we wish to install. We've got three options in total. For now, we're going to carry on with our installation using a simple native NATS event bus. Remember, Controller Manager is watching for changes to our custom resource types and taking action. So when we create a new resource of type event bus, inside Controller Manager, the event bus controller watches and observes the event bus resource that I just created. It then installs all the necessary components for me based on the event bus definition I provided. On the left, we can see the controller manager logs, which show the event bus controller creating several resources behind the scenes. We don't need to worry too much about most of these, but the resource we care about here is the event bus stateful set we've just created. Uh, as you've heard us say a few times before, the event bus is the transport layer for Argo events. And to ensure it's reliable and to avoid losing event data, because that is pretty important, um, the event bus is installed as a stateful set. If you are curious about other things you can do to make your event bus highly available, production ready, you can find more in the link here. Now we have Argo events installed. Controller manager is watching for changes to event source, event bus and sensor resources in our cluster. And we've configured an event bus to allow for asynchronous decoupled communication between our event source and sensor. We are ready to put Argo events into action with a real life example, which JP will take us through now. All right, we are getting through this together. Thank you to thank you to Becky for. Uh... We we are making it roll. All right, was this the slide again? I cannot see any of these. Keep going. Yeah, here we go. No, this one's gonna be it. All right. Now let's go over a real world example of uh, using Argo events in practice in tandem with Argo workflows. So we're going to go over the life cycle of an event uh, using the example of triggering tests to run from a PR event from GitHub. So we've got the uh, glyph for uh, GitHub PR being open that's going to send us out a JSON blob and we want to consume that and then run an Argo workflow that is going to run our tests, builds, whatever have you. So for each event, there are really two things that the end user has to define. The first is going to be that event source, right? This is not referring to GitHub itself, but the configuration to GitHub to receive the event. And then second is the sensor, which is going to chronicle the map between that event source and then the Argo workflow that we want to create as a result of it. The controller manager is going to be running that loop and then providing the syncing. So again, we mentioned that Argo events is tightly coupled with Argo workflows. The UI for Argo events lives within workflows. If you're familiar with the workflows UI, you can pop it open, go to the sidebar, I don't know what the icon actually like means, but the one that's highlighted is going to show you the uh, graph of what the Argo events uh, looks like. And so this is what it looks like for this specific example. So again, we're talking about the GitHub use case here. So in this case, we've opened a pull request and then something, namely GitHub, is going to be producing an event. So we configure that event source so that Argo events can consume it 
And then what the event source deployment does is it's going to be taking that event in whatever format GitHub has it, right? Whatever uh, version 300 billion, because they frequently uh, release new versions of their API uh, is, and it will translate it into a standard event that other parts of the system can read and work with. So it then takes it and loads it onto the event bus. So. Let's take a look at the configuration of this event source. So here's what it looks like within the YAML. I'm going to come down into the audience again because my uh, screen is broken, but is what it is. And we'll take a look at it together. So we've provided a name um, and defined the namespace. But really within the GitHub block is where we're doing a lot of the heavy lifting. We're talk we specify the owner of the repository, the repository name itself. And then within the events block, we're listing the specific events that we want to consume. So the one that we want to listen to is the pull request event, right? Like there's a ton of other events. Thank you. Um, but this is the one we care about for this. Now, also, we need to specify where the webhook is being sent. So we're specifying the endpoint, additionally, the port and the method, um, which is going to be a post. Um, additionally, we also have to specify the URL that we send it to. So this is going to be whatever your cluster uh, like ingress address is going to be. All right. Reading YAML is hard uh, on your own laptop screen. Doing it like this, even harder. I don't know how our infra engineer does it. All right, cool. Excellent. So again, uh, the event source deployment is going to take that event, translate it, and then load it onto the event bus. And then we're going to pass it to the sensor. So for the sensor, I'm going to pass it back to England. Like. So let's look at a sensor to read events from our event bus. Our sensor will have two key sections, dependencies. That's one or multiple events that a sensor is essentially waiting to happen and triggers things that we want to execute to trigger as a result of our event dependencies being met. Let's start with our dependencies. So that event or multiple events, our sensor is waiting to happen. In our case, we want our sensor to be listening for the GitHub event that we configured in our GitHub event source earlier. And this very simple definition here is the least that we need to get started. It gets more interesting if we have multiple dependencies listed here. And if we wanted to filter out the noise, because let's face it, GitHub can be pretty noisy, uh, we could use a filter to do that. We won't use one now, but you can find guidance and a very quick and easy example in the documentation linked below. For now, let's stick with our very simple dependency. Once we've defined the dependencies our sensor is looking for, we can set out our triggers things we want to execute as a result of our dependencies being met. So we want to run an Argo workflow. Let's use a trigger template of type Kubernetes to do that. And we want our workflow to run using a workflow template that runs our build and test steps for us. So let's use a workflow template that I created earlier. And we might want to add a few parameters, perhaps a PR number, a commit SHA. Those might be useful in our workflow steps. This trigger will run whenever our sensor's PR dependency is met. And again, we could add a bit more to our definition here. Uh, if our sensor has multiple dependencies, we might want to add some conditions here. But for now, the dependency and trigger that we have just run through are the most important parts of our sensor and the most important concepts to understand. Of course, for full examples to actually try this out for yourself, you can have a look under the examples directory of the Argo events GitHub repo. Again, we apply our sensor. We have a sensor that can read our dependency from our event bus and trigger an Argo workflow based on that event. So let's zoom out and take a look at the big picture, a journey, a complete journey in the life of an event. And in JP's words, because he promises me uh, that you will be more familiar with this term than me, uh, from soup to nuts. 
or from beginning to end. We've configured a webhook in GitHub. We did that when we created our event source and our GitHub webhook emits pull request events. When I create or update a pull request, the event source in my cluster detects that event emitted by GitHub and publishes it onto the event bus. Our sensor, which is reading events from the event bus, detects our new pull request event, which matches the dependency we defined and triggers a new Argo workflow to run our build and test steps on our new or updated PR. So just in case you wanted, really keen for one more diagram. Uh, here we can see the same thing in the Argo workflows UI. If we work from left to right on the left, we can see our GitHub event source. You'll notice that the event bus isn't depicted here, but we know it exists. Our PR dependency is shown as linking our event source and our sensor, and then our GitHub PR sensor triggers our Argo workflow. We can see our Argo workflow on the right, running our build and test steps. Job done. Of course, we update the PR at some point with the changes that we missed, GitHub fires off a new event, and it all starts again. Now, what's worth noting is what we've really been looking at so far is a very simple example. One event source listening for pull requests on one GitHub repo, one event bus, one sensor. We can think of other tools that would do a very similar thing. But now we've covered the fundamentals. The power of Argo events comes from, let's say, let's describe it as its flexibility. While we don't have time to cover that in great detail now, we can at least have a bit of a look at what that might mean. Uh, now, normally one thing we can count on as staying the same is we probably only want one event bus. But for that one event bus, we can actually have many event sources, we can have many sensors. Perhaps in some cases we actually want one single mega event source which could be configured to listen to events across an entire GitHub organization. All right, gang, we are right at time, so I'm going to wrap this one up and cut it off at the end. My apologies, uh, given the technical difficulties, but we have gotten through uh, a lot together. I don't know if I can actually go to the right screen, but it's what it is. I don't see it. No, nope. I was looking to uh, get to the slide screen, but it looks like my computer is just freaking out on us, so it's all good. Anyway, guys, my name is JP Zivlich. I was joined by Becky Polly. We're really excited. We're going to skip Q&A because uh, we're over time, but we'll be at booth T33 tomorrow. Uh, Pipekit, we do provide enterprise support and a control plan for Argo workflows. If you have questions, come hit me up after the presentation. Thank you for doing this with us. Adversity and all, we got through it together.